The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Do you own your own home, or are you planning to buy or build a home? Then we suggest that you have pencil and paper ready to make notes when the Equitable Life Assurance Society, sponsor of this program, tells you about America's finest plan for home ownership. The announcement on this plan is due in about 14 minutes. Have your pencil ready because this Equitable Society plan can save you money and give you greater security in a home of your own. Tonight's FBI file, The Fugitive Horse Player. many decent, honest people connected with the sport of horse racing. These people are interested in trying to keep the sport clean and well conducted. However, there are millions of loose dollars connected with the business. And where you find millions of loose dollars, you will also find many loose characters. Parasites who will engage in any amount of hard work to make a dishonest dollar. Such a parasite of racing is the palp. A genius with patches in his pants who offers to make you a millionaire overnight. Sometimes the price is $10, sometimes the price is $5. And sometimes, as you will learn from tonight's case from the files of your FBI, he takes his payment in blood. Just about the time a recent meeting opened at an eastern racetrack, a shabby office was opened in the large city nearby. There was more than coincidence in the twin openings, because the office was to be the headquarters for Joe Muncie. Official title, Joe Muncie Tout. Muncie, a trimly built dapper man, is sitting at his desk. Brownie, his girl, his secretary, his wife, had just entered the office in the small reception room. Joe. Come right in, Miss Brown. What is that? Oh, I thought you had a customer, Brownie. Are you kidding? Well, don't worry, baby. That code ad I put in the morning record will bring them in. The place to find suckers is at the track. We'll get a bite right here. Don't say that word bite. It makes me hungry. Look, baby, I don't like this no dough routine any more than you do. Then let's get out to the track and find some umpchays. Brownie, you don't have to go looking for horse players. If they think you know something, they'll come looking for you. That ad in the paper will bring us a cup. Yeah, listen, you want to tell you? Somebody come in. Probably the landlord. All right, open the door, open the door. Don't let oh, me get away. Okay. Something I can do for you, sir? Uh, yes, I, I saw your ad in the morning record. Oh. Uh, don't keep the gentleman waiting, Miss Brown. Show him right in. Come inside, please. Uh, thank you. This gentleman has come here in regard to your ad, Mr. Muncie. Oh, splendid. splendid. Uh, that'll be all, Miss Brown. Yes, sir. Uh, sit down, Mr. Uh, Adams. So now, Mr. Adams, uh, Muncie's the name, Joe Muncie. Oh, how do you do? Fine, fine. Uh, Mr. Adams is a new customer. You're entitled to know about the firm. Established 1933, 15 years of satisfied customers. We pick them, you play them, results guaranteed. Uh, I see. And I suppose, like the dozens of other turf lovers that have been in here this morning, you're interested in today's code special. Well, uh, yes. You couldn't have picked a better day, Mr. Adams. I can underwrite the fact that today's pig will be on the bill daily from wire to wire. Well, I... Uh... I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. Oh, just parlance of the turf, Mr. Adams. This horse is a sure winner. Well, now, uh, how much is the code special? Uh, since you're a new customer, you're entitled to a special rate. The usual tariff is 20 bob, but I'm letting you in for a saw. What's a saw? Ten dollars. Oh, well, that's certainly reasonable enough. Uh, let me see now. Goodness, I thought I had ten dollars. Uh, I'm afraid I haven't anything less than a hundred. Uh, well, I'd be... A hundred? Uh, yes, can you change it? Well, not at the moment. I 
Just just sent my bookkeeper to the bank to make a deposit. Well, now, maybe I can go downstairs and get some change. No, 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 huh? no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Adams. Just sit right down there. Well, very well. Mr. Adams, I'm going to ask you a very direct question. Yes? Just what kind of money are you prepared to bet? Well, uh, if I thought a horse had a real good chance, I, I'd be willing to wager a uh, thousand dollars. I'm going to sit down too. You said a thousand dollars. That's right. A thousand dollars. Well, that does it. I'm going to break a rule of a lifetime, Mr. Adams. I'm going to give you a complete and absolute stranger, Joe Muncie's super special. Well, now, how much does that cost? Absolutely nothing. Well, I, I, I don't understand. You're getting a winner absolutely free. All you got to do is bet 20% for me. What do you mean? If you bet a grand and you lay two yards, 200, that is, you bet that much for me. You understand? Well, that certainly sounds fair enough. Uh, I'll uh, have to go uh, to get the money, though. Well, okay. Okay. But you'll be back here at noon and we'll go out to the track together. Right? I'll be here. You can count on it. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be getting along. Okay, Mr. Adams. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Muncie. Goodbye, Mr. Adams. Goodbye. <sighs> Brownie. Brownie. What is it? Sweetheart, did we just make a score? That was the sweetest thing. I heard everything. What's with that tone of voice? What's with letting that short ten bucks get away? Chicken feed, honey. The sucker is good for a bundle. If he comes back... He'll come back. And what's the super special you dreamed up that's going to come through today? Then I get one. What's the best bet in the scratch sheet? Breakaway in the third. That's the super special. And if he blows the dupe? He's a stick out. Besides, we got 200 going for us for nothing. Before we're through, baby, we're liable to wind up with 20, 50, maybe 100 G's. Yeah. You got two bits? I'm hungry. <laughs> Farther downtown that same morning in the local office of the FBI, Special Agent Terrell is just entering the office of an assistant to the agent in charge. Did you want to see me, Mr. Naylor? Yes, Terrell. Say, did you ever hear of a town called Bentley? No. It's about 100 miles upstate. It must just be a wide place in the road. It's bigger than that. It's at least big enough to have a bank where a teller could get away with $28,000. Well. The teller didn't show up this morning. He left Bentley sometime after 5 o'clock yesterday. They think he's come here? They think it's possible, but they have no evidence yet. Has he any friends or relatives here? None that they know of. Mm -hmm. I think you'd better train up there right away and investigate. You could be back in the morning. Okay. The missing teller's name is Fred Williams. He's probably changed that by now. Yes. He'd been with the bank 12 years. One of their most trusted employees. Did he take the $28,000 all in one lump? No. The defalcations cover a period of a year. Oh. But he did take a little over 10000 of it yesterday. Must have known the examiners would do then. Not necessarily. Anyway, do a thorough checkup on his friends and personal habits. We may get a good lead on him that way. Right. It's almost post time. You want the glasses, Mr. Adams? Oh, oh yeah, yes, thank you. Now, let me see. Which one is breakaway, Mr. Muncy? Uh, that the uh, chestnut colt with number seven on the saddlecloth. Number seven, oh, yes. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah. He'd be even more beautiful when they put his number up there on the tote board. I don't like that outside post position. Brownie, breakaway can stop for lunch at the head of the stretch with these pigs and still win it. Well, I'm glad you're so confident, Mr. Muncy. You know how confident I am? No. With the price up to two to one, I think you ought to press. Press? Yeah, press. Send in another thousand. This is the bet of the year. I hope you're right. You're going to press them? Oh, no, no, no. I'm satisfied. We're winning $2,000 on a race is enough for me. Ah, oh, I get it. You want to see if my merchandise is any good first, huh? <laughs> well, uh, something like that. Why, Mr. Adams, the last time I had a loser, they closed the schools for three days. It was also Christmas time. It is now post time. Uh, too late to make another bet now, even if you want to do. When that bell rings, the windows are closed. I wish this race would start. They'd be out of there... Any second now. Huh? Keep your eye on that outside stall. And they're off! They're off there. They're going to... Let's break away. Let's break away. Huh? He must be in the pack. But come on, break away. And for the lead, that's Western Story, Transatlantic and Hot Tamale. Yeah. Then comes Glamour Boy, Dixie Lee, Southern Cross, and the last horse is 
breakaway. We got left. What? Left at the post. Oh, goodness, there goes my thousand. Not yet, Mr. Adams. Not yet. Come on, you breakaway. In the back stretches, western story by one line. Hot tamale and southern cross, neck and neck for second. A gap of three lengths, we come to Dixie Lee, and on the rail, breakaway. He's breaking, breakaway, Mr. Two Adams. He's breaking. Back, huh? timer boy, and the last horse is transatlantic. He's making a move. What? Breakaway is making a move. What? Is that good, Mr. Munson? Shut up, will you? Come on, break away. Come whip on. Whip him, Eddie. Whip him. Go to the whip. Come on, and come on, Eddie. Stretch that southern cross in front with breakaway ranging alongside. Come on, come on Eddie. Eddie. Back we have hot tamale. Then Dixie Lee, Glamour Boy, break away. Western Story. And the last one is France and Glamour. Come on, Eddie. Come on. Come with that hole. Oh, break away for a minute. Come on, Eddie. Come on. Come on. We win it. We win it. Oh, we win it. Uh, I was never worried. Mr. Muncy, how much do I win? Well, they ain't put the prices up yet, but you should win over 2000 Oh, that's wonderful. And hey, Mr. Adams, let me tell you something. Huh? What? This is only the beginning. Good morning, Mr. Naylor. Oh, hello, Darrell. Just get in? Yeah. Get anything that might give us a lead on that bank teller? I think so. What is it? He's probably right here in town. How do you know? I talked to a friend of his. He told me the teller had just taken a sudden interest in playing horses. Uh-oh. Which probably accounts for the series of defalcations over the past year. I would think so. And since there's a race meet going on here, that's probably where he is with the last 10000 he took. Yes. Did you get a picture of him? Uh-huh. Then I guess you and I will be out at the track this afternoon. <laughs> Brownie, hmm? let me see that newspaper, will you? I'm reading something. I want to look at the selection. You got eight tout sheets there now. I'm making up a consensus. You can lose without that. Where's Adam? Uh, he's due at the hotel here any minute now. We're uh, going to do a little playing on our own today, baby. That's figured. Well, look, we made 400 yesterday. We got to put it to work, don't we? <laughs> you remember that old French saying, you can't accumulate unless you speculate. Joe. Come on. Take a look at this guy's picture in the paper here. Huh? Who does he look like? Hey. It's Adams. Yeah. Only his real name is Williams. What's a gay? He's a bank teller from a jerk town named Bentley. Skipped out and short $28,000. Hey. No wonder he has that bundle. Oh, this ain't so good. What do you mean? Well, the guy's red hot. If the law picks him up, he's a cinch to tell who helped him spend that money. You're forgetting one thing, sweetheart. The law ain't got him yet, but we have. I don't get it. Today's special is going to cost Mr. Adams. Plenty. You mi- that must be him now. now. Let me handle this. Okay. Hello, Mr. Munson. Hiya, Mr. Adams. Come right in. Thank you. Hello, Miss Brown. Hi. Well, all set for another day of fun and speculation? Yes, indeed. I certainly hope we're as fortunate as we were yesterday. Well, I case the card and come up with nothing but winners. In every race? That's right, Mr. Adams. Well, that's very reassuring. Just one thing, though, Mr. Adams. Uh, what's that? Today we bet a little different. How? Today you're laying a thousand a race for me. What? Show him the paper, Brown. Okay. Here's a nice picture of you, Mr. Adams. Or should I say Mr. Williams? Oh. That's why we're betting my way. But now, look here. I can't afford to bet that kind of money for you. I have to win a lot of money myself. No kidding. You see, I've got to pay the bank back that $28,000. And betting on those winners is the only way I can raise it. The bank can wait, Mr. Oh, no, no. Look, you got no choice. Oh, yes, I have. I can discontinue our relationship right now. Joey's walking out. Oh, no, he ain't. (laughs) Well... Finally picked a winner. And now, before the FBI file on the fugitive horse player resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week, at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, somebody asked how much it was wise for the average man earning $5,000 a year to pay when he buys a home on mortgage. 
The answer was $12,500, or two and a half times his yearly income. On this sound basis, a man getting $50 a week won't be over his head if he buys a six or $7,000 house. But no matter what your income is, it will pay you to investigate the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan, which offers you five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Every dollar previously paid on principal is returned in full to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Two, a special cash fund is built up, always ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, this cash fund increases as the mortgage shrinks. It can be used to shorten the term of the mortgage, pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in as little as 14 years. Four, mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Five, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission, no bonus charges. Well, frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a house, get complete information on the assured home ownership plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Fugitive Horse Player. Racing touts fall into the category of chiselers. And all chiselers are unscrupulous opportunists. To them, money is something to be gotten by any method, even though it be criminal, as in tonight's case from the files of your FBI. The fact that the victim of the tout called Joe Muncie was himself guilty of a crime does not lessen Muncie's guilt in striking down his victim and robbing him. Rather, it stresses the meanness of his crime. It is nearly noon now, some two hours after Joe Muncie struck down and robbed the absconding bank teller, Fred Williams, alias Fred Adams, in Muncie's hotel room. The FBI's assistant to the agent in charge, Naylor, is sitting at his desk when Special Agent Terrell enters. I'm ready to leave for the racetrack whenever you are, Mr. Naylor. Well, since we're driving out, maybe we'd better get started. I gave some prints of the teller's photo to the police who will be working the track, too. Good. Between us all, we should be able to... Wait a minute. Naylor speaking. Yes. What? Are you sure? No, no. Just send him in the regular way. Right. We don't have to go to the racetrack, Terrell. Why not? Just watch who comes through that door. Mr. Naylor. Come in, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Well, for the love... Sit down. I'm sure you gentlemen are a little surprised. Well, that's hardly the word for it, Williams. I was going to give myself up anyway after I got the money back. But getting it back is out of the question now. Does that bruise on your face have something to do with it being out of the question? Yes, sir. Then let's have your story, Williams. From the beginning. Waiter. Yes, sir. Let's have a check, will you? Right. Come on, baby. Finish that coffee. Don't rush me. We just about got time to get to the station. You can eat at the track. Did somebody pass the law we have to get there for the first race? I got the winner. You don't want to miss a sure thing, do you? Oh, you've been reading your own ads. Relax. But, honey, I... I I'm get... not so sure I even want to go to the track. Look, I've only got the first four races handicapped. We blow after the fourth. Okay? What about Adams? Williams, whatever his name is. What? You're, you're afraid you go to the cops, huh? Yeah, aren't you? Honey, Mr. Williams is hotter than the inside of a glove. He can't go near the cops, so they put him away for 50. I hope you're right. I know I am. Now, look, we play the first four races, beat it back to town, get the car, and head west. Ah. 
Are you sure this is the room Williams was slugged in? Yes. Use the passkey, Darrell. Right. Well, they didn't lose any time getting out of here. Come on. Let's see what we can find. No telling where they're headed for. They'll leave a trace wherever it is. What do you mean? Muncie's got all those $100 bills Williams took from the bank. Oh. And we've already sent out lists of the serial numbers to all field offices this morning. Good. Anything in the desk over there? No. Not a thing. I guess we'd better... Wait a minute. What'd you find? The scratch sheet and the racing form. I think we'd better go out to the track after all. Why? Muncie has handicapped four horses for the day. Well? Muncie's a horse player, Terrell. Nothing short of an earthquake could keep him from playing these four horses before he jumps town. After slugging Williams? Muncie would figure that Williams couldn't afford to go to the police. That's true. Do you suppose he bet with a bookmaker or went to the track? We'll just have to gamble at the track. We've missed the first race. But Muncie's got three more to go to make us four. And we'll be there before the third race. Come on. That's two winners in a row, Brownie. That's par for the course. Let's quit. Are you kidding? Let me collect our 3000 then I'll buy our tickets for the third, and we'll head for the bar. I wish we were heading west. Honey, we will be right after the fourth. I don't like it, Joe. Paying off. You like that, don't you? Sure, Look, but... we leave this town with a satchel for baby. Now, come on. Let's collect. <laughs> Over here, Mr. Naylor. Well, we're in, fella. You mean you spotted Muncie? Nobody's here. How do you know? Two of those $100 bills have shown up. At the betting window? Uh Uh-huh, the $50 window. I wish we had some positive way of identifying him. Williams can do that. But he's back in the city. He's on his way out here right now. Huh? I phoned the United States attorney before we left town. The fourth race starts in 20 minutes. Williams will be here for it. Suppose Muncie's fourth selection doesn't win. He won't be going to the window for the payoff. What's he playing in the fourth race? Um, Ragman. Carol. Yeah? Here's where you and I have got to root a winner home. The horses are on the way to the starting gate, and Williams isn't here yet. Who's this coming now? <sighs> okay, you win. Mm-hmm. Did we make it in time, Mr. Naylor? Yes, Williams. Just in time to help us root Ragman home and catch Muncie. Good. That's going to be a real pleasure. Come on. Here's a good place to watch and root. It is now post time. Ragman's got post position three with the jockey wearing the bright gold blouse. I think I can get really get excited about this one. Well, they all seem pretty quiet. Maybe we're going to get a start. And they're off. They're off. And for the lead, that's Ragman. The gap of two lengths that is the Colonel Tootsie Buttons in the last confusion. Come on, Ragman. Whip him, young man. Whip him. Stay up there, Ragman. He's moving away from them. At the half, it's Ragman by three. The Colonel and Tootsie head and head. A length back buttons and the last horse confusing. Come on, Ragman. Stay up there with that horse. Keep moving. I think he's going to do it. Going into the stretch turn, Ragman by three. Tootsie, the Colonel, and Buttons lapped each other. A gap of eight lengths confusing. He's starting to quit. Ragman's quitting. Come Stay on. up there, Bobby. Come Go on. to the whip. Hold him up, Bobby. Come on, drive now. Stretch, it's Ragman on the rail by one. Tootsie ranging over the outside. Three lengths back buttons and the Colonel head and head. And 15 lengths back confusing. Hang on, Ragman. Only a 16th to go, Bobby. Hit him, Bobby. Come on, you Ragman. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Ragman. Come on. Come on. He lasted. He lasted. He won. Ragman's number is up. His picture's for place. Let's go down to the $50 window. Oh, baby, what a day. Four bets, four winners. Honey, I take back everything I said about you. Now do me a favor. Sure, honey, what? Let's go as soon as you collect. Sure, sure. We're going to be on our way in five minutes. Just let me get on this line here. Hello, Mr. Muncie. What? Adams. Williams is the name. What are you doing here? I'm here with these gentlemen. Huh? We're special agents of the FBI, Muncie. Joe! Wait a minute, miss. We want you two. Together you make a wonderful parlay. (laughs) 
Frederick Williams was tried and convicted of embezzlement and sentenced to a long term in the federal penitentiary. Joe Muncy and Florence Brown were jointly tried and found guilty of attempted murder and are likewise serving long terms in the penitentiary. Joe Muncy did hit four winners in a row. Because touts, like anyone else who follow the horses, have their lucky days at selecting winners. But ask any veteran of the sport, and he'll tell you that you cannot possibly beat it for keeps. The bank teller, Williams, learned this the hardest way possible, the criminal way. And he learned, too, a lesson many hardened criminals could have told him. A lesson your FBI continues to prove 24 hours a day. That crime does not pay. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment, but now... Let me refresh your memory on the more important features of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Remember that the mortgage interest is only 4%. Remember that if the owner dies, the widow owns the home without any mortgage at all. Yes, the Assured Home Ownership Plan is practically foreclosure proof. To get the full story, talk to the Equitable Society representative in your community. Ask him for literature that gives all details. You'll find him in your local phone book under the name The Equitable Life Assurance Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Homicide Hideout. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank, speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Homicide Hideout on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.